Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Great Beer Garage. My name is Matt, and today we're working on a beer bottle cap countertop. And so we're going to be using this uh, three-quarter inch plywood, uh, and we're going to paint it black. And this is a sanded piece of plywood that was like 55 bucks over at Lowe's. We're going to use this to paint. We're going to use this to paint the board with. So we'll get a nice coat of black on the top, on the edges, and just around the uh, couple inches just around the bottom. And then that way uh, you won't see the wood from the bottom, but the top will be completely black. And then that's where we will adhere our bottle caps to. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and get painting on this now. Get a coat or two on it, hopefully before the sun sets. If not, we'll have to put another coat on tomorrow. And uh, I'll show you all my bottle caps that I've been saving for years friends and family and everybody has kind of saved these bottle caps for me so i'm super excited to do this it's something i've wanted to do for a really long time and i'm finally going to do it and what the idea behind this is is that we'll adhere the bottle caps to the board and then we'll pour maybe an inch or an inch and a half uh thick clear epoxy on here and so first we're going to get started with painting those we're going to go ahead and get into that right now Okay, so what we have here is Cryon Color Max Gloss Black. It's already been uh, shaken. The folks at uh, Lowe's were nice enough to shake that for me, in addition to two gallons of paint that we bought for the, um, the tiny house. So that's a project we're going to be doing over uh, next weekend. So by the, time, yeah, by the time you see this, I'll probably be up in my property working on that so I don't know if you can hear it but now we got the jets flying over the airliners like I mentioned on my last video they changed the air patterns for Tampa International so now we have all that going on so we're just going to go ahead and put a nice coat of black on here calling you. I can hear them over there squawking. Look. Oh yeah, we need that. So, uh, my wife uh, from Roni's Backyard Chickens showed me something that we absolutely have to have for our cabin. Which is uh, chicken bedding, which I'm sure is what we need. We're going to have chicken everything, I think. I mean, nothing says country like chicken. So this is going on really good. I'm hoping that this won't suck the paint in too much, but it might, so. Yeah, but that's gonna look really good. Yeah, that's gonna look great. Especially with the green base. Yeah. Yeah, so the countertop is gonna be black, but it'll have the bottle caps on it. And then the base cabinet we have we got from Home Depot and it's an unfinished uh, cabinet and we've got a really cool paint color up at the cabin that we're gonna uh, paint the cabinet with so like I said when we get up there next week that's gonna be one of our one of our projects we'll paint the cabinets we're gonna paint the walls and do the floors we'll do the floors yep so we bought all new flooring today so we're going to do all new flooring and we got a nice um, thick underlayment for that so hopefully it'll deaden out some of the sound of walking across that floor and that'll be part of our long weekend excursion to the property so as you can see it's laying down real nice i'm going to go ahead and we'll stop the video here while I finish this up and I wanted to see wanted you guys to see how this laid down so hopefully you can see pretty good let's see can we tighten up on that yeah so you can see it's covering really nice 
All right, so I don't know how well you can see the board, but it got pretty good coverage on the first coat. But I'm definitely gonna do two coats. Um, just because it was plain wood, so I'm sure it's gonna soak up quite a bit of the paint as it uh, dries. So we will um, come back through after this dries or tacks up and see how long it takes before we can do our second coat. And then we'll get our second coat applied. But in the meantime, everything looks really nice. It's a good dark, well, obviously it's black, so it's a good dark color black here and true, like a true black, not like a smoke, like a smoky color or anything like that. It's actually like true, true black. So and that's definitely what we wanted. So. Okay, so here we are next day looking at the uh, board after it's dried up real nice and i just laid out the first row just to see kind of how they looked how it turned out they're not glued in place or anything yet i need to build a border to go around this you know all the way down and around so that i can pour the epoxy in here or on top of all these but I'm going to go ahead and put a second coat on there. Although I don't, I don't really think it needs it necessarily. Because it looks like it turned out really well. And then obviously, you know, this is the back of the board. So no need to paint that. It's going against the wall. All right. So we'll just throw a second coat on here. And then um, hopefully this evening, maybe we can start gluing some of these caps down. Okay, so we just finished the second coat on here, and I think it's going to look great. It already looks really great, but uh, when it dries out, it'll be even better. So that's the second coat, and then tonight, I got to pick up some more wood to build a border around the whole thing. Then we can start laying down our bottle caps. I've asked a friend of mine who has a glow forge to cut me out something for the center here. I don't know if she'll be able to get it done in time. If not, I will use my vinyl cutter and I'll just cut it out of vinyl because I've already designed it. Um, and then because this is going to be a countertop, I want to add a piece down here and make this look thicker, like an actual countertop would. Granted, it's gonna be about an inch to an inch and a half of epoxy resin on top of this board so it'll be just over two inches tall but i wanted to have that piece underneath here to make this have a little thicker look and then i'll probably do the same thing on this side over here we'll put a piece here underneath and make it look thicker as well all right so that's where we stand with this for now Got to let this dry, put on a border, put the caps on, and then epoxy. All right, guys, so we are back here. And the board has the second coat of paint, and it's nice and dry. And now we're applying the bottle caps. So we're going to do our outside run as a Bud Light. And then we'll go ahead and work our way through the middle with just a random mix all right guys so as you can see we've got our first row a row we've got our border done see what we've done here is we've created a strong border and then we can backfill or not backfill but then fill in from there so just like you're doing a puzzle you do your border first and then you can fill in like I said, it always makes sense to have a strong border. All right, guys, so as we saw in the last little clip, we got our border done and we're using these old beer uh, buttons in the corners and then we'll put one in the center and then, you know, kind of out through here. But we got a bunch of these really, really old, old beer buttons. I cannot remember where I got these from or who gave them to me. 
So, but anyway, we're gonna insert those in here just to kind of make, make it a little bit of a different look. As you can see now, these are all starting to line up real nice. All right, we'll keep updating as we go along. All right, guys, so here's a new progress update. We got piles of these beer bottle caps, and then we've got that side over there. So we probably got another, I don't know, four nights, another four nights worth of bottle cap building. And all we've been doing with these is we take them and we flip them over like this. And then we take our hot glue gun and we fill it full of hot glue, burning our fingers the entire time. And then we just stick them just like that. I got a couple loose ones there. And apparently I never even put glue in. All right guys, so here you can see we've got the board completely covered and now we're going to build we're going to build a border around the whole thing on the outside so that we can pour our epoxy resin in there so what i did is i got some one by four and we're going to cut that and then that's what we're going to build our border out of so we've got now our first piece of border on and we secured it with five screws and we've backed it with some fast setting silicone. So that sets in 30 minutes. So now we'll go ahead and get our other border on this side and then we'll do our ends. All right, so now you can see we've got our border all around and we used, I'll show you what we used here. We used the uh, GE Kitchen and Bath silicone, and I think this stuff dries in like 30 minutes. I don't know where it says it on here somewhere, I think. But anyway, we sealed all of our edges behind these boards where they butt up against the plywood. That's all sealed. The corners are all sealed, and you can see they're a little wet still. Sealed out here. Then what we're gonna do after this is flip the board out. We'll take the board and flip it over. And we've got um, metal tape, like you would use for duct work. And we're just gonna go and tape the bottom. And then we'll tape our corners, um, just as an extra precaution because this epoxy resin is like water. And if there's anywhere for it to get out, it will get out. No one's really ever told us to do this, but since we used the glue guns, there's a lot of like little strings. I don't know if you can see them on here, but there's little strings like that. And I don't know, anyway, just from using the glue gun, we get stringy stuff like this here. So we're using the torch to melt those down so that they don't float up in the resin. <laughs> So our next step in the process was putting our border on. Now I've gone through and I've taped everything with uh, silver tape, metal tape. And uh, when I flipped it over, we lost a bunch of bottle caps as they fell off. So our next step will be getting those glued back in and then we will start looking at pouring our epoxy okay so we are finally ready 
to start our epoxy mixing. So we have our uh, A and B here and the Pro Marine product is a true one to one ratio. So we're gonna actually start with one gallon of pour. So we'll do a half gallon of each into this bucket and um, a half gallon is two quarts. So once we take A and B and mix them together, we should be at the four quart mark. So we're gonna go ahead and get that mixed up right now. And then we'll go ahead and do our pour. So we'll go ahead and start with part A. And we'll pour into the two quart line. That's the slow pouring stuff. All right, so we are at our two quart mark. Seal this back up. And we'll pour part B in. And that'll go to the four quart mark. And then the mixing time for this is five to eight minutes, no longer. If you go longer, you run the chance of the chemical reaction uh, advancing too far and it becomes uh, thick and you won't be able to make a liquid pour, like a smooth pour with it. All right, so there we are with our two pours. Now we're gonna go ahead and mix for five to eight minutes and we'll set a timer for that. And the idea here is you get all your corners, really good corners in a round bucket. You get all your edges good as well as your bottom. And you get a really good mix that way. It doesn't it look hard. Yes, sir. It's thick. All right. All right, guys. So here we go with the first pour. Let's see how this thing goes. I'm going to start back here. Whoa. And we'll come over here. And so after this is poured in, you can apply heat to this to push your bubbles out for up to 40 minutes. We have the stir stick. Okay. I feel like I scraped out all I can scrape out of the bucket. So now we'll just continue trying to smooth out this pour. You're gonna have to push it to the edges because at least up here they weren't, it wasn't going. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So your cleanup can be done with uh, rubbing alcohol, mineral spirits. All right, so we'll go over this and you'll see there's little bubbles in here. So what we wanna do is just go over this. You can see how it's
So you can see there's a couple bubbles there. All right, so here's our first flood coat. And you can see we've gotten all our bubbles out. And they say not to apply heat past the 40 minute mark. And I'll tell you why is that it gets actually pretty thick at that point. And um, there's really nothing you can do because once the bubbles are in there at this point, they're kind of there to, to stay, which I have a couple right there that I missed. But um, some of those will be able to take off when I route the edges of the table. But that's the first big flood coat. Our second flood coat will cover, finish covering the caps that didn't get quite covered all the way, which back here there's a couple of high ones. I don't know if you can see it that well in the video, but there's a few high ones here. That's a high one there. But otherwise they look really nice. And um, hopefully this second flood coat will cover this up. If not, we're gonna have to order another gallon. But uh, that's kind of where we're at right now. Just waiting for four hours until we can apply our next coat. All right, so we have now finished mixing our second uh, batch of deep pour. And so we're gonna take that over to the board and we're gonna go ahead and start laying this in. And I think we'll start in the center and kind of pour out. So okay. that is a gallon, almost a gallon pour dial again. And then we'll take our, our little uh, Bondo scrapers and we're gonna go ahead and, sorry, we're gonna go ahead now and smooth all this out. And put you back on the uh, tripod here. So as you can see, we're just gonna go ahead and smooth everything off to the edges as much as possible to get a nice smooth second layer of epoxy. So if it goes to the edge look it's going back so that means there's enough on the edge and it's leveling itself it should should we scrape on top of that or no no i don't think we need to do that i mean yes. just so we can see what happens If it's high enough, it should just flow back over it. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, it's all on the edges. I don't want to do too much, but I. But look, it's going to the edges and then going back to the center. So I'm assuming it's the way it wants it. I don't know. I'm hoping it's level. Yeah, because as I push it, it goes back. But look. Yeah, it looks like that end is pretty deep. Mm -hmm.
I mean, I checked it for level earlier, so. Hopefully it's level. Yeah, that's what All right, guys, so this is our second pour, and we're probably gonna have to do a third pour to get this G covered up, and um, we'll start hitting it with heat and get the bubbles out. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and start applying some heat. bubbles popped out and I'm hoping we'll have a whole lot less bubbles this time than we did in the first pour because in the first pour we still had air pockets underneath the caps so we were getting a lot of bubbles but I think because that first coat has sealed the caps that we should not have nearly as many bubbles as we did in that first pour but we're just going to keep an eye on it for the next 40 minutes and then um We'll have to let this thing set up, give it 10 hours. We do have another gallon of, of epoxy on the way from Amazon. And we'll, we'll put the link out uh, for the epoxy that we're using. But uh, otherwise, I think this looks really nice. You can see there's no more, no more bubbles in there. Let's see, so we, we weren't able to get the coverage on here like I wanted in this pour, which kind of stinks, but we'll deal with it. As you can see, otherwise it looks like glass. Beautiful. And I'm really happy with this for our first time doing it. All right guys, so the next thing you'll see is probably us doing the third coat on here. Here goes number what? Three. Three. Last drop out of here. Oh, I guess we'll call that good. Look how far it's gotten. Yeah. All right, guys. So this is supposed to be self-leveling. And you can probably see it's, I don't know how well you can see it, but it is slowly creeping out here to the edges. And I went in here and actually re-leveled the board again before this pour. So hopefully this will do it. But now we're going to go ahead and smooth everything out. And we'll show you what that looks like after. Okay, so now we have our third layer poured. We've done the heat treat over it to try and get all the bubbles out. Which I think is pretty much done. There's our third coat. Okay guys, here we are. Pour number three is dried and we had bubbles come up. So took my Dremel out and tried to get those out as best as possible. We had a really big one here and I dremeled that out. So now we're going to go ahead and do pour number four. All right, so here goes pour number four. And we're going to try and fill these, these uh, holes in. Hopefully they fill in all right, we'll see.
I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on camera, but it is slowly moving to the edges, but we're gonna hasten that along with our scraper. All right guys, so you get the idea. You've seen this now for the fourth time. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off and work on getting this leveled out. Okay, so we've got everything leveled out. Now, time for that. Let's get our bubbles out. All right, so that looks like the bubbles are out. Now we're gonna just come through periodically and make sure there's no bubbles that come up, but that's gonna be it for the fourth pour. Now after this, we'll remove We'll remove our borders and then we're going to use a router on the edges and uh, we're just going to round over the edges to give it a smoother look maybe just across the front and that side because that's what's going on our on our uh, base cabinet so the only thing you'll really see is the front and that side so i might just round those over all right on to the next step